Okay, so today we're really diving into human performance technology. And I know that's something you've been wanting to explore more in depth. For sure. Um, and specifically, we're going to be taking a deep dive into this article by Guy W. Wallace, all about migrating from instructional systems design, or ISD, to HPT. Right. And, you know, you might be thinking, like, well, isn't ISD already about performance? Yeah. And that's what I think is so interesting about this article yeah. is that, you know, Wallace is really saying that ISD, while valuable, is really just one piece of the puzzle. Yeah. It's like we've got the whole toolbox, but we're only using the hammer. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It's about expanding our toolkit beyond just training. Yeah, for sure. And he actually uses this phrase right in the beginning. He says, ISD is not HPT. It's a subset. Right. And so as someone who, you know, is already familiar with ISD, that's not just semantics, right? That's about really kind of shifting your perspective. It is. Yeah. It's fundamentally looking at it from a different lens. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, think about it this way. Let's say you're trying to like boost team productivity. Right. The, you know, classic ISD approach might be to develop like a time management training or something. Sure. But what if the root cause is actually, you know, unclear priorities or like a clunky project management system. Totally. HPT would push us to analyze all those different factors. Yeah, you got to look at the whole system. Yeah, it's like putting on those x-ray glasses to see beyond just the surface level problem. Absolutely. And that actually reminds me of how he breaks down all those traditional ISD roles, you know, like the planner, the analyst, the designer, all those different things. Right. And it just made me realize like how specialized we've become in a way yeah, yeah. where sometimes we're missing the bigger picture. Yeah, we get siloed. Yeah. For sure. And it's interesting because he's saying like in an HPT world, those roles might need to evolve a little bit too. Like yeah. take the analyst, for instance. Okay. You know, in an HPT world, they become less about just gathering data. Yeah. And it's more about being like a performance detective. Yeah. Finding the why. Yes. Figuring out what's really going on. Exactly. Yeah. Figuring out those root causes and then making sure that the solutions are actually aligned with business needs. Absolutely. Making sure it's a performance gap and not just a training gap. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And he uses this great analogy in the article. He talks about the dangers of being like a Lone Ranger analyst. You know, you could have the most brilliant solution. Right. But without stakeholder buy-in, it's going nowhere fast. Yeah. You got to get people on board. Exactly. And he actually shares this funny story about, he actually shares this funny story about these skeptical managers that he had to win over. Oh, I bet. <laughs> and it wasn't until he showed them the hard data, like the actual cost of not addressing this performance gap, yeah. that they finally, you know, got on board. It's right. that old saying, seeing is believing, right? Exactly. And you know, this idea of stakeholder buy-in is huge in the article. Like, Wallace is really advocating that we need to be involving those stakeholders way earlier in the process. Yeah. Not just when it's time to, like, implement the solution. Right. So instead of just presenting them with a finished product, you're bringing them along for the ride from the very beginning. Yeah. Exactly. Like, imagine you're part of a team and you're brought in on a decision after it's already been made. Yeah. You'd probably feel a little resentful. Yeah. Probably. But if you're involved in the discussions, if your voice is heard, you're much more likely to be invested in the outcome. Totally. It's about building that shared ownership from the get-go. Exactly. And it makes total sense the more people understand the why behind a solution, the more likely they are to get behind it. Absolutely. And this actually leads into an, an, another important point that he raises, which is about moving beyond just those traditional ISD solutions. Okay. You know, he's advocating for a much more collaborative approach. Yeah. Not just within the ISD world, but across different disciplines. Yeah, I loved that part. Didn't you? Where he's talking about, like, partnering with other professional societies. Yeah. Like, bring in the marketers, bring in the engineers, bring in, you know, the HR folks. It really works. To really, like, tackle these performance challenges together. I love that. Yeah. Such a good point. I don't know about you, but that gets me fired up. Me too. <laughs> For too long, we've been operating in silos. Yes. You know, but when we break down those walls and we start sharing our expertise, that's where the real magic happens. It's like that old saying, two heads are better than one. Or in this case, maybe a whole room full of heads. Right. From different backgrounds and different perspectives. Exactly. And you get all that different thinking. Yes. All those different ways of approaching a problem. And all that knowledge coming to the table to create solutions that are truly effective and sustainable. Yeah. That's what it's all about. It really is. And it just, you know, it makes you wonder what we could accomplish if we weren't so limited by those traditional boundaries. Totally. Like what kind of innovative solutions could we come up with? If we really put our minds together. 
Yeah. And you know what's interesting is he leaves us with a really thought-provoking question. Okay. He says, how can you, even if you're not like an HTT expert, right. start thinking more broadly about performance solutions in your own WN work? Ooh. You know, like it's about taking these principles yeah. and applying them to like our everyday challenges, no matter what our role is. Yeah, I love that. So let's say you're struggling with a project. Okay. Yeah. And it just keeps hitting roadblocks. Right. Instead of immediately jumping to like, we need another training. Maybe ask yourself, like, what else is going on here? Mm. Is it a communication issue? Is it a lack of resources? Are the goals even clear? You know, right. it's about really adopting that HPT mindset. Yeah. Putting on those x-ray glasses. Yes. To see the full picture. It's about all of us becoming performance detectives in our own right. There you go. And I think that's what makes this deep dive so valuable. Yeah, for sure. It's not just giving us the what of HPT. It's Man. giving us the how. Exactly. Like how we can all start to shift our thinking and approach performance improvement in a more holistic and frankly more effective way. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, on that note, I think we've reached the end of our deep dive. But like you said, the exploration doesn't stop here. So for everyone listening, Keep asking those questions, keep challenging those assumptions, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible in the world of performance improvement. I like. And if you're hungry for more insightful deep dives like this one, be sure to check out our other episodes wherever you get your podcasts. Absolutely. Until next time, happy learning.